Pastor Odom says, beautiful, I'm going away. Thank you so much, Jacina French from State Temple Church of God in Christ for requesting that song. You blessed Pastor Odom's heart as well as you blessed our hearts indeed. We are going to try to get this song on by Keith Wonderboy, Remember Me. You listen to Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. We'll be on with you right through till 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please give us a call, 617-594-9955 to give your request, your prayer request, your praise report, your uh, tribute to the late Essie Odom. This broadcast is in honor of the homegoing of our beloved mother. I'm having some challenge getting this particular song, but we're going to see if this is the one that it, my sister was looking for. I, remember me. and Bear with me. I'm trying to find the particular song. I don't know, a little bit of a challenge. Bear with me, people of God. I'm so sorry. I thought I had it here. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Wall will have a fit. I've got dead air. We don't do dead air. Well, I'm going to have to come back to that song. I'm having a little bit of a challenge finding that particular song. Bear with me, my sister. Um, I'm seeing Remember Me, but not by Keith Wonderboy. Um, you can give me a call, please, at 617-594-9955. I want to make certain that I get the correct song on for you. Um, I don't happen to see that listed in my directory by um, Keith Wonderboy Johnson, but please give us a call, 617-594-9955. Five. I'm going to play a song by William McDowell. This song is entitled, I Give Myself Away. That's our desire. That's our prayer that we give our lives away. Our lives are poured out unto God, a drink offering unto the Lord. This is a special tribute to the late Essie Odom. Please join us at www.bostonpraiseradio.com. TV. Join the instant chat room. Pastor Odom is in the instant chat room. Please convey your sentiment, your words of encouragement, your song of dedication, your prayer uh, with to the family. Um, please encourage his heart. I give myself away, William McDowell. Looks for a generation of complete surrender. Yeah. A generation that will say, I give myself away. We're not afraid. 
We have no fear. We sing it. I can't generation of the earth who are laughing and looking for you. Come on, say it. I give myself You're saying, God, here I am. I withhold nothing. I give you my everything. I give myself So you. I love not my life even unto death. I say, I give myself You might not even know what that completely means, but God's looking for a generation, I give myself who will say it under shame. Come on, lift up your voice just one more time and say it. I give Ask us the question, God. Yeah, this is the word of agreement between heaven and earth. Oh, yes, Lord, yes. Come on, over this room from your heart. We say yes, say, we say yes. Oh, God, we say yes. Yes, yes. Come on, there's a surrender happening in this room. We say yes. to you, yes. We belong to you, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say me, say yes. Say yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We surrender. We say Oh, 
Lord, hear the cries of our generation. away. You're listening to Healing Our Lands Live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour, special tribute to the legacy of Mother Essie Odom, mother of our dear friend and brother, Pastor Ronald Odom, the wife of Pastor Paul Odom, members of State Temple Church of God in Christ. Another request by a member of State Temple Church of God in Christ, Sister Jacina French. This song is Donnie McClurkin Stand. This is a special tribute. Donnie McClurkin and Marvin. Tell me what when you've done all you can. Seem like it's never enough. Tell me what do you say?
That song was actually sung at the home going of Bishop Patterson, quite appropriate of the Church of God in Christ. And this is a tribute to the mother of State Temple Church of God in Christ right here in Boston, Massachusetts. Essie Odom, who's gone home to be with the Lord. This is a special tribute in her honor. You can give us a call live. That song was dedicated by our sister 
Sister French, who is a member of State Temple Church of God in Christ. Thank you, woman of God, for tuning in. Thank you for your request. We ask all our listening and our viewing audience to please continue to pray for the Odom family. Please give us a call at 617-282. Nope, forgive me, 617-594-9955. 617 594 9955. Certainly want to honor my brothers behind the walls of South Bay Prison. Want to honor our brothers who are in the transitional program and the person of my brother Everardo Jones. Bless you, man of God. Bless you, Johnny Walker. Bless our brother Popeye, our brother Robert, uh, Bruce McDougald, David Reason, William Frazier, Ron, and Anthony Woody. Mark Gwynn, Mary McDougald, uh, Mrs. Lodge, Darrell, and Walter Ashford. We want to thank these men of God for writing us, for tuning into the broadcast faithfully here on the Church of the Men of Hour. We love you, men of God. We're praying for you. We're expecting God to do great things in and through your life. I'm going to play this song by Bishop Mark Moore. The high places. Oh, that found out that he is a remedy for giving up. Is there anybody in here that found out that if you put your trust in Jesus? I will make the darkness light before you. Satan in his rage. How many know the devil's mad at you? Will tell thee and with all his cunning arts would snare thee. God said, even down to thine old age. I'll bear thee, oh, 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 and, and the high place. I don't know about you, but I got some high places in my life. And the high place.
please. Everybody can't relate to this because it doesn't have a lot of beat to it. But just those of you that have some trouble in your life, some places you can't get over. Give us a call live at 617-594-9955, 617-594-9955. This is a special tribute to Essie Odom, who's gone home to be with the Lord. Six one seven five nine four nine nine five five. Going to some more music. This is by Kim Burrell, who will be here in the city of Boston for a free gospel concert on this afternoon, 5 p.m. at Government Center City Hall. Mayor Bernino is giving a annual gospel fest, free concert at Boston Government City Hall Plaza. Katani Sumner, Boston's own Melody Law, and Ayanna McDonald, Andre Lang, and the Anointed Biblical Scriptures will be in Government Center at City Hall, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday, July 15th. That's this afternoon. And we're going to play a song by Kim Burrell, who will be right here in our city, praising God. We implore you to come on out and celebrate the good news, the gospel fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And let's lift up the name of Jesus right in the City Hall Plaza. This is Kim Burrell from her album entitled Everlasting Life. Don't you want to live forever, forever, forever. Don't you want to live forever, forever? Don't you want to shout forever, forever? Wouldn't you like to sing forever, forever? Yes, I want to live forever, forever. For God so loved the world that he gave. That whosoever believes in him shall never, never, no, never perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, yes, I want to live, yes, I want to live forever. Oh, yes, I want to shout, yes, I want to shout forever. Oh, yes, I want to sing, yes, I want to sing. Yes, I wanna live forever, forever. Oh, yes, I wanna live. Yes, I wanna live forever. Believe on me, as the scripture has said. For in that great day, all the saints will rise up from the dead. All who have confessed me as their Lord oh, will receive that just reward. No time for slipping, I won't ever, 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 everlasting life. I gotta have it, I gotta have it, everlasting, everlasting life. life. Everlasting, oh, 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 gotta have it, gotta have everlasting life. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going down. Everlasting life, every day will be sunshine. Howdy, howdy, never goodbye. Gonna see my mother, gonna see my father. Can't wait to get over there. Gonna see the man that died for me. Howdy, howdy, howdy never, never goodbye. No more, no more crying, no more dying. No more dying. Stay. 
Everlasting Life, Kim Burrell, come on and join us and celebrate with Kim Burrell, featured artist this afternoon at the Gospel Fest at Government City Hall. I want to read a letter to you by my brother Bruce McDougall, who wrote this to me from the Suffolk County House of Correction. Writes me frequently, he's mobilizing the brothers behind the walls of the Suffolk County House of Correction, implementing a Bible study. First and foremost, I pray my letter finds you in the very best of health. Praise God, Brother Hobbs. Now, as for mentioning my name on the radio, it's cool. I also finally caught your program, and I liked the way you were speaking. Every Sunday, I listen to Toya Hoffman. She comes on 6 p.m. And then I listen to Deborah Moses. She's on from 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. And if you and she were on together, it would lift even more spirits a lot more higher. The only thing I would love for you to do is to mention your ministry after two or three songs. In other words, when you send us our shout outs, you should also mention how people can also be a part of the work that we're doing up here and the work that you're doing out there. David Reason and William Frazier and the brothers Ron and Anthony Woody all listen, Woody all listen to the broadcast. And they mentioned about a Bible study and how people can be a part of it as well. So as for now, I'll be the one who will deal with the things here. And I'm now in the 4-1 unit because I'm on my way out the door. It's called the 4-1 re-entry unit. So the same way you have the meeting with the 4-3 drug unit, you can also have a meeting with the 4-1 unit as well. Or just have them call me down to the 4-3 meeting to get the Bible study books or papers. My spirit was already lifted when I realized that I finally caught your program. But when I heard somebody appreciate me doing God's work, my spirit reached sky high. As I've said, the only thing missing is mentioning Healing Our Land, Inc. ministry. How to write or a number to call. Please call my mother and my cousin and let them know what we're doing and let them be a part of it as well. Mary McDougall, let them all let the other pastors know we have to put on a fundraiser to help us with our new South Bay Bible study and let the world know one prison at a time. That was written to me by my brother Bruce McDougall. I had the opportunity, have the opportunity to go behind the walls of the Suffolk County House of Correction frequently and to through the recovery coach model we're connecting these men these courageous men of god to resources uh, while they're behind the walls and when they come out from behind the walls there can we continue to walk with them so we implore you to help us respond to the cries of these brothers we're amplifying their voices from behind the walls another letter the most recent one he wrote me says first and foremost i pray my letter finds you in the very best of health praise god brother hobbs brother hobbs you are a mighty warrior for our father god if doing god's work was easy a lot more people would be doing it so ask our Father to give you just a little more strength until your brother Bruce McDougall gets out so I can help you spread our Father's words throughout the Boston area. Now, as for our fundraiser, you're doing the right thing by asking people to help us. Let's just say it's time for us to start a fundraiser now. So talk one, talk to one of the pastors who wants to use their church You'll start advertising a car wash a week or two ahead of time. We can have a barbecue while they wait for their cars to be clean. They can also eat. Let the pastors know that we will split the donation with the church. The church choir can minister. Inside or outside would be better. They can listen to some good church music and have some barbecue while they had their car wash. We can either use one of the church bands to bring mothers and their kids up to visit their fathers. We can ask every church in Boston to come together one way or the other by doing one thing or another to help us make a difference with God's love. 
whether or not they want to participate in our fundraiser or just give a donation for our new prison Bible study. I'll be getting out at the end of next month, but this is something you can start now. Faith without works is dead. That's why our Father will give you the strength to deal with everything that's on your plate. Last but not least, it would be nice for inmates to have a number they can call their loved ones to say hi for one or two minutes on a certain day and time. As for me, my mother has Alzheimer's and by staying in touch with her is the only love I need as for now. Also mention Mark Gwynn today. God blessed you with an AM radio. Tomorrow our Father will bless you with FM. Today, our Father blessed you with Boston Praise Radio. Tomorrow, Father will bless you with TNT, TBS. Our Father blessed Tyler Perry from nothing to something. And he, if he blesses our brother and sisters, he will bless us too. Let's love our Father and praise him together, Brother Hobbs. And I got another letter from my brother, David Reason, that states, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am recreated being. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. I am complete in Christ. Jesus said, I will now, I will know the truth and the truth will make me free. I'm standing in Christ who has made me free. I speak to every mountain of adversity that is trying to be in my life. I command it to go. It must go in Jesus name. I speak to every mountain of prosperity and good health in my life. I command it to stay. It must stay in Jesus name. I am blessed today. Something good is going to happen to me today in Jesus name. I worship you Lord with all of my heart, all of my strength, with all of my mind. I lift up my hands and my voice and praise to your holy name and your Lord have made me worthy to praise your holy name. Amen. In service of Christ with Jesus, David Reason. I also got a letter most recently from a brother, Ruben Delgado, also from the South County House of Correction says, Minister Franklin Wendell Hobbs, my new brother in Jesus, God bless you 1,000%, especially your loved ones, plus all those super special members of Jesus family who are sincerely involved with this great, great, great program that is federally funded for me and so many others alike with a lot of severe past and present situations with a desperate need of immediate change in our daily lives from negative to positive so we all can finally learn to accept God's will 24 7 to become productive members of our society and peer leaders to all human beings plus role models to our youth who need our urgent guidance from pure hell can you please please try endlessly to bless me 1000% with a huge, huge favor and make copies of every piece of paper with my sincere and personal information about my severe, severe trauma in my life, chasing death after my deadly disease of addiction to all kinds of alcohol, drugs, and pills. Forward every copy to Myra Morales today, now ASAP. This sure is a life and death situation for me and my very, very last chance, respectfully asking. 12 times in and out of South House of so-called corrections. Thanks a million. Help, 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 help me now or I will die in prison or of an overdose or violence once I get out. These are desperate cries from these men of God behind the walls of South County House of Correction. And I implore you, my brothers and my sisters, they're desiring to implement a Bible study within the institution. Um, brothers are getting out and they're mobilizing brothers who are being tuned into the broadcast and being ministered to. They're, they're writing me and we have the opportunity to connect them to resources. But we're asking you to help us to help them and be able to purchase the materials. We go through the 2-7 Discipleship program here at Global Ministries Christian Church, a discipleship program that teaches us how to have our roots go deeper and our branches to grow tall and to bear fruit 
And this is a three-part series. Colossians 2, 7 is the foundation scripture. And I can tell you that I've been in church all of my life, and I've grown immensely just by this discipleship course. And these brothers, are just, we've had the privilege of being able to have these books being implemented within the prison where each inmate will have their own workbook where they can continue to study behind the walls as we supplement that by um, continuing to feed them via the broadcast. And so we're asking our listening and our viewing audience to please sow seed into the ministry that we can purchase these books that our brothers can have the study materials behind the walls that they're asking to study the word of God. You can write a tax deductible donation to the Ministry of Healing Our Land. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. You can write your check to Healing Our Land Inc. Ministry, and you can mail it to 670 Washington Street in care of Minister Franklin Wendell Hobbs, or you can mail it to 10 Ellet Street, 10 Ellet, E L L E T Street, Suite 502, Dorchester, Mass., or you can go online via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv and make a secure donation. Just indicate that it is to go toward the specific resource of buying the books for our inmates at both Nashua County Jail as well as the, South, the Suffolk County House of Correction Prison Ministry. We'll make certain that those resources are dedicated as such. You can also Meet me here at 670 Washington Street, Global Ministries Christian Church, the parent body of the Boston Praise Radio and TV Network, on our Sunday morning worship experience. And you can uh, give that secure, give me that donation via a check um, in my hand personally. You can also go to Healing Our Land's website via www.healingourland.org. We want to thank these men of God for tuning into the broadcast. Thank these men of God who are going into transitional programs, going into detoxes as we continue to walk with them and support them in their ongoing healing process. The Bible says, when I was in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. The Bible states that if we want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, we must be willing to serve the least of them. So I implore you to hear the cries of our brothers who are behind the walls who are asking for a change of direction in their life. The 48 hours that a person is discharged from prison is documented to be the most critical window of time that either they will reconnect with the same individuals that got them in prison or they'll have an opportunity to be able to go to a different direction. Again, we, there are 40 of us who have been trained as faith-based recovery coaches. This is the first time the federal government is allocating resources specifically to the faith community under the George Bush administration. George Bush had a problem with alcohol addiction as a believer, and he understood the role of faith to overcome his addiction. And many people are struggling with all kinds of addictions, whether it's lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, or the pride of life. We all have fallen short. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and it's but by God's mercy that we're not consumed. Galatians 6, 1 states that we who are spiritual, when we see one overtaken in a fault, we should restore them in a spirit of meekness, considering ourselves, lest we also be tempted. The same spirit in which we're comforted, we should be moved with compassion to comfort our brothers and our sisters. Healing Our Land is a ministry that was birthed out of the issue of HIV and AIDS as it disproportionately impacts underserved, marginalized, disenfranchised, and it has grown to a ministry addressing disease macro. However, that manifests through intimacy. The foundation scripture, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, that says, "If my people who are called by my name would humble ourselves and pray and see God's face and turn from our wicked ways, then God will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sin and He will heal." our land. Our land needs healing and it will only happen as we, the body of Christ, manifest. We are the salt and we are the light of the earth. The Bible says if we've lost our savor, we're good for nothing but to be trodden underfoot. All of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. We pray the prayer our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. 
we manifest the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Many members, but one body, understanding that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. But our weapons aren't carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. One believer can put a thousand demonic forces to flight and two in agreement can put 10,000 to flight. As we come together in unity and conceive and birth God's immaculate conception for our life and we do the part of the collective body that God has called for us to do as many members but one body, we push back the forces of darkness. The Bible says, faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Love believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. It's not puffed up. It keeps no record of wrong. It doesn't vaunt itself. It does, it's not rude, but it's kind. It's long-suffering. It's patient. Love, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and he that loveth not does not know God, for God is love. First John verses 4, 7, and 8. I implore you to help us to build infrastructure and capacity of the healing and empowering movement. I was diagnosed with HIV over 25 years ago, though I've been born and raised in a Christian home all of my life that did not preempt me from being died from from being exposed to the HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus that progressed to an AIDS diagnosis, been down to three T cells, but by the grace of God, I'm have it's not even detectable in my body today. I'm grateful for that diagnosis that pushed me to a place to, of desperation to go deeper in my intimacy with God. HIV stands for me healing internally, vigorously. I'm grateful for my ongoing recovery process. I go to a recovery group every Friday night where we're implementing the 12 steps based upon the word of God, recognizing Jesus Christ as our higher power. This is a principal process. We're in the fourth step of doing a fearless moral searching inventory of ourselves. The Bible says, again, if my people who are called by my name would humble ourselves and pray and see God's face and turn from our respective wicked ways, then God will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart that he will not deny. So we implore you to, again, help us to be able to build infrastructure of this movement, help us to be able to respond. We endeavor to create an after-hour drop-in center for people who are struggling. This is the church at the midnight hour where people are caught up into prostitution and drug addiction and homeless and mental illness and all kinds of things that have, in many instances, to do with issues that underlie their behavior from molestation to incest to all kinds of things that are deep emotional scars that ultimately can manifest in sexual brokenness that ultimately manifest in all kinds of perversion but we have to understand that we've all sinned we've all fallen short of the glory of god is but by his mercy that we're not consumed on our best day but thanks be to God that his mercies are new every morning and his compassions, they fail not. We who are spiritual, the matured state of the character of God, it's imperative that we restore one another in a spirit of meekness. One of the nine graces of the fruit of the spirit articulated in Galatians, the fifth chapter and the 22nd verse. The Bible says that love, joy, peace, that's character as an inward state. And the overflow of that is long suffering, gentleness, meekness that has to do with character and expression toward our horizontal relationships, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness against such there is no law. We are saved to produce fruit and fruit that will remain in our account. It's not enough just to be saved. It's not enough just to go to church. It's not enough just to be a good, moral, upright person. We're saved to produce fruit. And so we implore you to, again, help us build infrastructure in the healing and empowering movement and address this ease macro. We're going to go to some more music by Kim Burrell. Again, she's going to be in the city of Boston this afternoon from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. This song is entitled, I'll Keep Holding On. This is dedicated to my brothers behind the walls of South County House of Correction and my our brothers and sisters behind the walls of prison, even at Nashua Jail. I keep holding on, I'll 
We'd love to hear from you. 617-594-9955. We're still honoring the life of S.C. Odom. You can still call us with your request, your prayer, your dedication, words of encouragement to the Odom family.
Just need to testify to some man next to him. Tell him, I'm strong, I'm wise, I'm better, much better. When I look back over what he brought me through, I realize I made it because I had you to hold on to. Now I'm stronger. Better. I made it. Is there anybody in this house other than me that could declare you made it? Tell your neighbor, never would have made it. Never made it. Tell them, never could have made it. I wish I had some help here. I wish I had just two or three people that would just declare it. Never would have made it. Never could have made it. I just. 
I just love to encourage myself. Sometimes I just look in the mirror and say, I'm strong. I'm wise. I am better. So much better. When I look back over what he brought me through, I realize I made it because I have you to hold on to. But I never would have made it. I never could have made it without you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour sponsored by the Caleb International Ministry. Please visit the website www.calebim.org Caleb I M for International Ministry dot org. That is the parent body of the Ezra Institute. I have the privilege and honor and responsibility as a graduate of both institutes. My spiritual father, Pastor Louis Legata, is the founder and director of the respective institutes, and he serves those who serves. Ezra Institute is an institute of the School of Apologetics, where we study the Word of God in the context of the eternal purpose of the Word of God. Again, not manipulating the Word of God or cherry-picking scriptures to reinforce our doctrines, our customs, our cultures, our creeds, our biases, but the eternal purpose of the Word of God as Ezra studied the Word, Ezra lived the Word, Ezra taught the Word. St. Francis Assisi said, preach the gospel, use words if you must. So we're living epistles seen and read of men, and we're grateful for the challenge and the charge to be living epistles seen and read of, God, seen and read of men through the Ezra Institute. The next classes of the Ezra Institute, as well as the Caleb Institute, you can learn more about by going to www.caleb.com. I am dot org C A L E B I M dot org. We want to read to you um, again. One acknowledge the t two epidemics: incarceration and HIV. How the criminal justice system has played a role in HIV. How did HIV and our criminal justice system become two thousand five hundred over? Oh my goodness, two. I can't even read this number. Over 500,000. U.S. has 5% of the world's population but has 25% of its prisoners. We incarcerate more people per capita than any nation, a total of 2.5 million, an epidemic of incarceration. When epidemics collide, they are two epidemics incarceration and hiv the effects of incarceration on the spread of hiv care for hiv in prisons and jail transition to the community conclusion incarceration is one of a number of forces that have shaped the domestic hiv epidemic the massive imprisonment of members of populations that bear a disproportionate burden of HIV has significantly perpetuated the spread of the virus, and it is unlikely we will see an overhaul of the legal system anytime soon. Sentencing laws that feed the gluttonous criminal justice system with inmates are likely to remain as well policing policies that lead to the arrest of people of color and those living in poverty. Few people under correctional supervision will receive the substance abuse and mental health care they need. So behind the walls of our correctional facilities, the virus 
will remain. HIV mortality rates in prisons have plummeted, mirroring su survival trends seen in the free world attributed to partnerships with academic centers and health departments. Mental health, another major issue of people behind the walls, people diagnosed with bipolar or not diagnosed. I want to read to you a quick article, Mental Health and Gospel Music. When I first heard Marvin Sapp's song, Never Would Have Made It, from his 2008 album entitled Thirsty, I was instantaneously alienated by his message of almost going insane. Sapp says, I would have lost my mind a long time ago if it had not been for you. Sapp didn't lose his mind, but I did. Still, I went to hear Sapp sing live on July 17, 2011 at the Boston City Hall Plaza, where he divulged that he was referring to losing his wife to cancer, being left alone to raise his children and manage his own career. Sapp's message resonated with a lot of people, needless to say, I too was enthralled by his performance at the Boston City Hall Plaza. However, in private, I identified with, with one of his much less popular songs, You Are God Alone. This song was the best of both worlds. I could hear his powerful voice singing a ballad without a salty allusion to mentally ill people. John P. Key, who is considered a gospel legend, also sings about mental illness in quote, crazy, uncrazy, from his, I mean, quote, 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 crazy, unquote, from his 1990 album entitled Just Me This Time. He sings about his crackhead father, who was also a faithful member of the church's gospel choir. And this same album, he sings about his father's death and I miss you, dad. In my opinion, Key's message also brings to the forefront the grievance of many rationalists such as myself. There is much more crime within religious communities than on the streets. John P. Key even admits to falling for crack cocaine. So what's the point of going to church? If every person is a criminal, there's a much higher chance of being a victim of a hate crime, not to mention most religious people will not separate their personal gripes from the compassion that Jesus had for lepers, prostitutes, and all outcasts. Squarely put, congregations are much more closeted about their crimes until it reaches the media and they have no other choice but to profess their private misdeeds. Furthermore, the prevalence of homosexuality within religious communities is simply ignored. So as long as it is not referred to as such, in other words, homosexuality is accepted only if it is called something else, such as trial, struggle, or personal issue, admitting to being gay will result in a person being excommunicated from his church, family, and friends. Unfortunately, the African-American religious community has yet to find a place for homosexuals with out relegating them to second class citizens. Of course, it's open, it's an open secret that gospel music and black community are much more hostile towards the mentally ill and consequently most people of color are forced to suffer alone. However, in the deep south, arguably the message in changing in churches are much more welcoming to everyone which is afflicted with an illness regardless of what it is. One example of this openness can be heard in Yes, which is a song performed in 1993 by the famous Mississippi Mass Choir. There are no encrypted messages or innuendos, but rather the soloist is frank about being legally insane. In black churches, confession are supposed to be a means in which you come clean about one's past and to be and to be forgiven by his community, but many religious leaders lack the right discernment and proper training in order to distinguish a genuine public confession from fair game, chatter, and gossip. On the other hand, chatter and a phenomenon inseparable from an antithetical reality. On the other hand, gossiping is criticizing another person's weakness without earnestly acknowledging one's own. I shall cite the Mississippi Mass Choir song in depth because the nature of the confession is graphic in comparison to others. Not only does the singer confess to being mentally ill, but also confesses to having been involuntarily hospitalized for six months in a state hospital, which is a prison for the mentally ill. 
But for those readers who may be confused by my hermeneutics, psychiatric wards do not lock people in rooms. Neither are psychiatric wards equipped to hold people for long periods of time. State hospitals and psychiatric wards are two different things. State hospitals are more permanent and for the criminally insane. The following is a transcript of her confessions. Can I just tell my testimony? Can I be a witness for the Lord? You see, some of you don't know, but I'm not ashamed anymore to let you know that I know him as a healer. He's my He's not my doctor. He's my healer. You see, when we were back in 1988, I did near the cross, not knowing that the enemy was going to try me to see if he could steal my rest. You see, I went to the hospital. I stayed there six months. I was perplexed, couldn't think straight. Some of you don't know what it's like to be out of your right mind. I was crawling the walls, running when nobody was chasing me. But you know, I was in that room they had me locked up, and if I could do nothing else, you see, I went down on my knees, and I said, Lord, I said, help me, please, help me, please, help me, please, help me, please, and I want you to know the Lord gave me my joy back. He gave me peace of mind. He gave me happiness. He gave me love, and I praise him. Help me to say, yes, choir response, yes, 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 yes. Choir response, help me to say yes. My soul says yes. I'll go where you want me to go. Oh, I'll do what you want me to do. My soul says yes every day and in every way. Choir response, yes, yes, yes. My soul says yes. Hallelujah. This is an article written by my new friend and brother, Shedrick Gavin. He hosts a broadcast here on the Boston Praise Radio and TV Network every other Wednesday as a co-host with Luis Carcion entitled Mental Health in Your Neighborhood. That's from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Wednesday. Luis Carcion is here and our brother Shedrick Gavin, who is a self-identified person who was mentally ill and gives his testimony of being homeless and self-medicating with drugs and then being diagnosed with bipolar in 2005. He's now a graduate student in the philosophy department of Boston College, and he um, is a, a shining example of a person confronting mental illness, and he now is a co-host here with our beloved Louise Deacon Carsey owns. So I implore you to tune into that broadcast. I raised this issue to talk about mental illness, to talk about incarceration, to talk about HIV, to talk about the situations that many of us don't want to often talk about, that are issues that we, the church, must talk about and we must address. One in five Americans has been diagnosed with mental illness. 22 of Americans under 18 have a diagnosable mental illness. 44.3 million Americans, people with serious mental illness die 25 years earlier than others in the general population. Suicide is the 11th leading cause of death amongst Americans. Four of the 10 leading causes of disability in the U.S. And the, un and the developed countries are mental disorders. Serious mental illnesses, which affect 6% of American adults, costing society 100 and 93.2 billion in lost earnings annually. More than 10% of all inmates in prisons and jails, 250,000 individuals have schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or major depression at an annual cost of six billion. This is nearly four times the number of those cared for in hospitals. Success rates for treating mental illnesses are high. Treatment success rates for bipolar disorder are 80%. For major depression, 65%. For schizophrenia, 60%. Treatment success rate for heart disease is 45%. People with mental illness enrich our lives, quote, Unquote. You see the signage behind me if you're tuned in via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv, and it articulates, know your status. It's imperative. The Bible says, confess your faults one to the other and pray one for the other so that we can be healed. Then the firm and effectual prayers of the righteous will avail much, and we're righteous only because we confess our sins and we put them under the blood where we can be forgiven. The Bible says, confess your faults to God. He's faithful. He's just. He'll forgive us and cleanse us of everything that's not right. 
We know the story in the Bible that a person who was born blind and the story was asked, who sinned, his parents or he that he was blind? And Jesus said that neither. This was an occasion that God could be glorified. Again, we speak to the mysteries of God. We must understand that we've got to be able to confront whatever our situation is. We have health care systems that we can go to. We can, can, we can address our issues. You won't know that you're HIV positive unless you've taken an HIV test. That's the only way you can be positive that you're negative for HIV is by taking a test. It's not something that's offered, that's given to you with a routine signing of a medical consent upon going to a doctor. You've got to sign a separate written informed consent to be offered an HIV test. So every year when you go to your doctor, you should go to your doctor and have an annual thorough physical workup inclusive of an HIV test. Even if you're married, even if you're in a monogamous what you perceive to be relationship, it's imperative you take responsibility of your own health and that you are comprehensively an advocate for your health. So I implore you to go to your doctors, know your health. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He said he would that we prosper and be in good health even as our souls prosper. We can't be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. So God came to give us life and life more abundantly. He wants us to have it all. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. He who the son has set free is free indeed. So I implore you to go to your doctor. I, here in the state of Massachusetts, we have health care for all, regardless of your economic situation. Our President Obama is desiring to implement health care for every American citizen across the entire country, regardless of your financial situation. So I implore you to stand with him and support that agenda. Jesus implored us as a social justice imperative that we responded to the needs of the sick and the people who were uh, oppressed. God is the God of the oppressed. It was Martin Luther King Jr. that stated the church must be reminded that it is not the master or the servant of the state. It should never be the tool of the state, but it must be the critic and the conscience of the state. If the church does not recapture its prophetic zeal, it will become an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority. It was Martin Luther King Jr. that says the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moment of comfort or convenience, but where he stands in time of challenge and controversy. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You're playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We're all meant to shine. As children do we were born to make manifest the glory of God that's within us it's not in some of us it's in all of us and as we let our own light shine we are liberated from our own fears and our very presence automatically liberates others let the words of this song minister to you you are God alone we love to hear from you 617-594-9955 617-594-9955 5-9-4-9-9-5-5. You can write us at 670 Washington Street, Dorchester, Mass, in care of Minister Hobbs. We love you, and God loves you as well. There's no question of your greatness, no searching of your power, all the wonder of to you, 40 years is but one hour. Your knowledge is all encompassing. To your wisdom, there is no end. Oh, for you Everlasting 
truth is here always. You are He who was and is and is to come. Who is He that can number your days? He flung the sun to burning space and the night's moon found his light from day.
Listen to Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour, sponsored by the Caleb International Ministry. In part, we need your support to continue to be on the airways to be able to be the Church of the Midnight Hour to respond to the needs of the church, to the body of Christ, to the human family worldwide. We're many members, but we're one body, and we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Is but by His mercy that we're not consumed on our best day but his mercies are new his compassions they fail not in the same spirit in which we're comforted we should be moved with compassion to be able to comfort each other the bible says again beloved let us love one another for love is of god he that loveth not does not know god beloved let us love one another for god is love i want to read a letter to you this is by a brother whose name is Ruben Delgado. I have in the music, playing music in the background by Andre Lang, who will be at the concert this afternoon with Kim Burrell at City Hall. All that I am created to worship is the title cut of the album. I'm going to let it play in the background. I'll read this letter to you, my most recent letter I just got from a brother who had the privilege of visiting behind the walls of the Suffolk County House of Correction and the person of Ruben Delgado Jr. Age 10 started drinking beers. Age 12 started snorting cocaine. Age 13 started snorting heroin. Age 14 started freebasing, smoking crack. My vicious, vicious cycle chasing death daily, 1,000% has caused me severe pain and suffering 24-7 because I truly did not understand or could accept my deadly disease of addiction. To all kinds of alcohol, drugs, pills, plus. Due to my severe alcoholism and drug addiction, plus serious mental illness of bipolar, paranoia, schizophrenia, and anxiety, I've been paying an endless journey 
of self-destruction. Drinking and drugging for 37 long years, now incarcerated, in and out for 27 long years. Now shot, stabbed, five times, lung puncture, 2007, five overdoses, 10 blackouts, homeless for 12 long years now. I abandoned my son at the tender age of five years old, plus his super special mom. My mom passed away only 11-26-2000. Since my love of a mom passed away, I do not have any kind of positive support from my six older brothers or my two older sisters. No more will I let my self-pride, ego, and macho image continue keeping me from asking anyone for their positive help to change my self-destructive and negative behavior to become a productive member of our society and a better human being to everyone alive. I was truly ignorant to the fact that I only had to seek proper treatment for my deadly disease, disease of alcoholism to all kinds of drugs and pills without any kind of treatment for my endless violent behaviors which are extremely abusive verbally and physically 1,000% whenever I do stop taking mental health medications, I relapse to my vicious addictions that bring severe thoughts of suicide and homicide, plus two damn many incarcerations. Today, more than ever in my entire life, I do not, do not need to continue to be a Toys R Us kid and finally become the man that my higher power God and my lovable mom, rest in peace, blessed me to become. When I was born on May 28th in 1965, I can honestly say to Reuben Delgado Jr., 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Today, I am truly ready to finally become a new man with Jesus. Respectfully yours, Ruben Delgado Jr. This is why we're on the air, men and women of God. These letters move me almost to tears for these men of God who have the courage to reach out to the hand and seize the opportunity to be the men of God that God has called for them to be. We're walking with them. We're praying for them. I ask you to pray for my brother, Ruben Delgado Jr. I ask you to pray for the people who are asking us to pray for them. My brother, Bruce McDougall, I ask you to pray for the people who are acknowledging their struggles with addiction, their struggles with mental illness. They're, they're acknowledging their um, own moral and destructive issues. We're doing a fearless moral searching inventory of ourselves. I ask you to pray for Robert. I ask you to pray for David Reason, William Frazier, Anthony Woody, Mark Gwynn, Mary McDougall, Johnny Walker, Mrs. Lodge, Daryl Gregory, Everardo Jones, Walter Ashford, Rodney Black, Ron Hill, James Taylor, Tina Booker, Stephen Wright, DJ Lamont Locust, Rocky, Tara Jones, Wendy Johnson, Gregory Dennis, and Bobby Andador, Maureen, Elaine, Greg Eugene, Marvin Allen, Francis Morris, Betty Relaford. These are people who've asked us to pray for them. Father God, we take this opportunity even now, God, to come boldly to your throne of grace, knowing that we have a high priest who can be touched simply by the feeling of our infirmities. Father, we're grateful that you came to heal the sick. Father, you didn't come to condemn the world, but that through the Christ that the world might be saved. And we are Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we, you live, you breathe, you move, and you have our being. And you, we live, we breathe, we move, and we have our being. Father, we are material that you live and breathe and move and have your being. Father, we know the Bible tells us that we have a treasure in an earthen vessel so that the excellency is of you and not of us. Though we're troubled on every side, we're not perplexed. We're not without hope. We're, we're, we're not in despair. We're, we know that we are 
perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're always bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that the life of Christ might be made manifest in our bodies. Father, we thank you that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Father, in you we live, we breathe, we move, and we have our bed. We know that we can have the authority to bind the hand of the enemy that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy the life and the life more abundantly that you've already secured for us. God, we thank you. The Bible says that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. So pray that God would send laborers into the vineyard. So, Father, we do pray that you send laborers into the vineyard. Father, we're grateful for the laborers that you're sending, even most recently through the 40 recovery coaches, the people who came to the faith-based luncheon here at Global Ministries Christian Church a few weeks ago. We're grateful for the people who said, yes, I'll walk with you. I'll stand with you. I'll lend my gifts to be a part of the healing and empowering movement. Father, bless them. Father, send the rest of the resources, Father, that we need to be able to respond to the needs of our hurting people who are desiring. Father, a change. Father, send, Father, the resources to be able to the full vision come to manifestation. We know that you have provision for the vision, God, that you conceived and that you birthed. And you will not forsake the work of your own hand, but you'll complete the work that you've begun. We know that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. So, Father, we bless you. You said, before we call, you will answer. While we are yet speaking, you will hear us, Father. You told us that... Oh, bless our God, O oh, you people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life and keeps our feet from being moved. Though, Father, you cause men to ride over our head. You bring affliction upon our Lord. You bring us into the net. And, Father, you bring us through the fire and through the water to bring us out into a wealthy place, an experiential place, God, of knowing you to be a healer, knowing you to be a deliverer, knowing you, Father, to be a, a, a father who is a provider, a God who can do exceedingly abundantly far of all we could ever ask or ever think. It's not into, into the hearts and the minds of men, the good things you've already prepared for those of us that love you. We know that all things you work together for the good of us, God who love you and who are the called according to your purpose. So, Father, we bless you for every answered prayer. Father, you said before we call, you will answer. And while we are yet speaking, you will hear us. Father, we thank you that we can come boldly to your throne of grace, unmerited favor, and find mercy and help in the time of need. God, we thank you for strengthening our brothers behind the walls. We thank you, Father, for opening the doors, Father, even as Paul and Silas prayed, God, at midnight so intently that there was an earthquake that shook the foundation, God, of the prison. And not only were Paul and Silas delivered, Father, but all the prisoners were set free. Father, you went to hell. You conquered the death in the grave, and Father, you set the captives free. So, Father, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for the church's finest hour, yet in the midnight hour. We're grateful, God, to be a part of the church of the midnight hour where you're making yourself large. God, we give you praise. We give you glory, God. We give you honor for healing, for deliverance, for provision, Father, comprehensively. We praise you, Father. We do believe that all things are possible. In the matchless name of your son, Jesus, Father, you said in St. Luke 137, for with God, nothing is impossible. So, Father, we bless you for an unprecedented move of God in the element of time. Breathe, God, into us from the north, the south, the east, the west wind, God, your supernatural power, God. Lord, elevate us to the place you have us to be in you. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, and again, we count it as done in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Let the words of the song just minister to you. This is Pastor Andre Lang from his album, All That I Am, Created to Worship. He'll be with us this afternoon with Kimberell at the City Hall Gospel Fest. You 
You can also give us a call live at 617-594-9955. We'd love to hear from you, your praise report, your prayer request, your dedication, um, whatever it is, or your question, we're here live on the air to engage you. You can also write to really Write us at 670 Washington Street, Dorchester, Mass. 670 Washington Street, in Dorchester, Massachusetts. You can participate in the live instant chat via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. We're honoring the legacy and this special tribute to the life of the mother of our beloved brother, Pastor Ronald Odom, Essie Odom, who went home with the Lord on yesterday. The mother of State Temple Church of God in Christ here in the city of Boston. Give us a call, 617-594-9955. Be blessed, we love you, in Jesus' name. He's turned my life around.
is real. Pastor Andre Lang from his album, All That I Am Created to Worship. You're listening to Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. I'm your host, Minister Hobbs. Be with you right through to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on the air every Saturday from 11 p.m. through to Sunday morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time live. You can give us a call at 617-594-9955, 617-594-9955. Shout out to my brother Everardo Jones and a shout out to my brother um, Johnny Walker, very proud of you, men of God, for your courage and for your progress. We're praying for you. These are brothers who are in their process of recovery through transitional program, through detox, and we're so proud of them going further than they've ever been before, inspiring us to continue to do the work that we're so honest to be able just to walk with these men of God who are overcoming the very difficult challenges of life by seizing the opportunities to be able to, to just experience a new way of life. The Bible says don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We love you, man of God, our brother Bruce McDougald, who is mobilizing the men behind the walls, who has the vision to implement the Bible study ongoing there at the South County House of Correction. It's now mushroom to go also to the uh, Nashua County Jail and to two respective churches to St. Mark's Congregational Church where Pastor Wayne Daly is desiring to implement that at his own church as well as Pastor Laura Ahart at her church and so we're grateful for Minister Barbara Nobles here from the Global Ministries Christian Church who introduced that curriculum here at the Global Ministries Christian Church to all of the membership from leadership right through to new members that we're learning to disciple the body of Christ. And I'm honored to be a part of this move of God. It's a song that our beloved pastor and president and CEO of the Boston Praise Radio and TV Network loves to, it, it just ministers, it ministers to him in this particular season by Bishop Paul Morton entitled, Whatever It Is That You're Doing in This Season, Please don't do it without me. And that's my desire, God, that we perceive the new thing that God is doing and that we don't miss the move of God. We've got to move with the cloud. And whatever it is that God is doing in this season, we don't want to miss it. Bishop Paul Morton. You give us a call at 617-282-0685. We don't want to still hear from you, 617. Oh, forgive me. Actually, the number is 617-595-594-9955. Pray for me, people of the body of Christ. I'm getting a little tired, but um, it's 617-594-9955. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 617-594-9955. Five. And again, the song is entitled, Don't Do It Without Me. Whatever it is you're doing in this season, we don't want to miss the move of God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss the move of God. I know that Pastor Wall doesn't want to miss the move of God. You don't want to miss the move of God. So I implore you to perceive the new thing that God is doing and be a part of it. Oh, I, I feel a special anointing in this place the glory fills this place could you just for just a moment with the fruit of your lips just begin to thank God come on in your own words if he's if he's been good to you if it wasn't for his grace you you wouldn't even be here tonight, but he's, he's been good to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I dare you to just give him the praise to Lord. 
Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. You're listening to Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. I'm your host, Minister Hobbs. I'll be with you right through to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is a special tribute to the life and the legacy of the matriarch, Essie Odom, who's gone home to be with the Lord. She is the mother of our beloved friend and co-labor, Pastor Ronald Odom. We ask you to please lift up the Odom family, Pastor Kim and Pastor Ronald Odom, pastors of the True Vine Church, the Odom family, Pastor Paul Odom, the husband of Miss Essie Odom, who's gone home to be with the Lord. Please lift up the family as they go through their process of bereavement. Please give us a call at 617-594-9955 to express your condolences, your words of encouragement, your dedication of song and poems and kind words. We ask you to please, please, please help us to honor the life and the legacy of this mighty woman of God and encourage the heart and the family of the loved ones who are going through their grieving process. I'm going to go to some more music. This song is by Donnie, Pastor Donnie McClurkin. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give us a holy word. We can't know what God is doing in this season unless we hear from him. And when he speaks to us, we have to be willing to say, yes, God, I'll do what you asked me to do. Let the words of this song just minister to you. Six one seven five nine four nine nine. Join the instant chat at www.bostonpraiseradio.tv www.bostonpraiseradio.tv We love you. God bless you.
Speak to my heart, Donnie McClurkin. Good to some more music by Vicky Wine and Safe in his arms. Love to hear from you. 617 
was safe in that um, no safer place in the whole wide world than to be in the center of the perfect will of God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Father. Help us, God. Change our hearts. Help us to trust you. We bless you, Father. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory. Vicky Winans from her album Gospel Legacy Safe in His Arms. You're listening to Hearing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. I'm your host, Minister Hobbs. I'll be with you right through till 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love to hear from you. Please give us a call at 617-594-9955. 617-594-9955. Five nine four nine nine five five. You can also join the instant chat conversation via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. That's www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. You can join me via my instant chat. On my Facebook page via Franklin Wendell Hobbs, that's F-R-A-N-K-L-I-N-W-E-N-D-E-L-L Hobbs. Going to go to some more music by Norman Hutchins. If you didn't know, now you know. Hallelujah. Bless you. I heard this little song in my spirit. Have you ever been through a trial and thought you wouldn't make it? You were smiling on the outside. But crying down on the inside Wondering when will the season end When will the joy begin How much more can I take And when will the season rain And will it end You're gonna know will it end Then I heard him say this, he said, he said. If you didn't know, now you know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be all right. If you, if you didn't know. Now you know. Now you know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be all right. This too. This too. Shall pass. Shall pass.
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Come on, fire. Shh. If you didn't know, now you know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Hallelujah. If you didn't know, now you know it's going to be all right. You listen to Healing Our Lands Live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. It's going to be all right. Everything that God promised you, it shall come to pass. Somebody put a hand clap on it. Somebody put a praise on it. If you really believe it tonight, if you really believe it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Odom, it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. My brother's behind the walls of South Bay. My sisters but you're not going behind the walls. You got to Speak those things that my are brother, not my sister, too, man, clipping through the radio dial. God. It's going to be all right. This, too, shall pass. Be of good courage. He's overcome the world. God is all powerful. The Lord is holy tonight. All Come on, night. shout holy, somebody. And he's omnipresent. And you know, that's what real worship is all about. Give us a call, 617-594-9955-617-594-9955 live here for you. Come on. Dwelling. Dwelling in your presence. Yes. Surrounded by your glory. And we cry. And we cry holy. Angels bow. Angels bow before you. Yeah. They worship and adore you. My God. And we cry holy. Everything in nature sings. Everything in nature sings. Oh, 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 giving glory to our King. We worship you. Oh, yeah. We worship you, your majesty. Yes. And we cry holy. Come on, y'all. Dwelling. Dwelling in the presence. Surrounded by. Surrounded by the glory. And we, we cry, cry holy. The angels bow before you, God. Angels bow before you. They worship. They worship and adore you. And they cry. And they cry. They cry holy. Everything. Everything. Everything in nature sees. Glory to our King. Yes. We worship you, our Lord. And we cry holy. Come on, say. You are Lord. You are Lord. God.
Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. Roman Hutchins. Give him a shout of praise in this house. From his album entitled "If You Didn't Know." Now you know. Y'all gonna mess around. You listen to Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. I'm your host, Minister Hobbs. Be with you right through to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to give us a call at 617-594-9955. 617-594-9955. Songs entitled Just When You Need Him. Norman Hutchins. I wrote this song to encourage somebody tonight. But he'll step in. Just when you need it most, can I get a witness in the building? I'm gonna call you to sing the song. Just when Step in tonight. Just win. I know. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Just when you need him most, 
Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. We'd love to hear from you. 617-594-9955. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. And how many know that when you get in trouble, you can call him and he'll come to your rescue. But you can't look cute. And you can't be quiet, but you got to open your mouth and say, Lord, I need your help. Anybody here tonight need God's help? Come on, clap your hands. Your praise on. Um, he truly inhabits the praises of the of his God. Do you just to give a hilarious, crazy praise? Let's break out and bless the Lord with all that you've got. I promise you that you'll feel better. He inhabits the praises of his people. Supersedes the love of any human being. Father, we bless you, God. You love us in spite of, not because of. Thank you, Jesus. While we're yet sinners, God, you died for us. The breadth, the depth, the width, the magnitude, the capacity of your love, God. We can't phantom and it's But I know he's on time. But God will bless you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your grace, God. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you, Father. Oh, God will bless you, Jesus. We will go to your name, Father, for long suffering. Yes. And bless God right now. He'll step in just when you need him most. You're listening to Healing Our Lands live broadcast on the Church of the Midnight Hour. We'll be with you right through till 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, winding down. Only got about uh, 50 minutes left on this broadcast, so you can please feel free to give us a call. We'd love to hear from you, hear your praise report, your prayer request, your question, your feedback on the broadcast, whatever it is at all. We're here for you to engage you. We are. This broadcast is dedicated as a special tribute to the life and the legacy of the patriarch. Forgive me, the matriarch. I said it again. I'm tired. The matriarch. She is indeed the matriarch of the Odom family in the person of Miss Essie Odom, who went home to be with the Lord on yesterday. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We go from labor to reward, to live as Christ, suffering, sacrifice, self-denial, and to die is great gain. She's experiencing the great gain in the afterlife here. She is home to return no more 
And so we ask you to pray for the family that won't have the opportunity to love on her in the flesh. We understand that it's a, uh, the Bible says we should cry actually when someone is born and we should rejoice when they actually transition as believers. Again, knowing to be absent from this body, we no longer have struggle in our flesh. We don't have sickness. We don't have to deal with the principalities and the powers and the wounds of the darkness of this world and the spiritual wickedness and the high places. But we can experience the life and the life more abundantly in its fullest. We go from immortality, our, our mortality, forgive me, our humanness is swallowed up in immortality. We have celestial bodies that are not made by hands that corrupt. And so we're grateful for she's celebrating. She's in the arms of Jesus. But we do ask you to pray for the Odom family. Pray for Pastor Paul Odom the husband of Essie Odom, pray for Pastor Ronald Odom, the son of, of Mother Essie Odom. Pray for the family, pray for Tyrone, pray for um, the other brothers, and, and pray for the family, pray for the loved ones, pray for them as they go through their hour of bereavement. We're going to go to some more music. This is Pastor Jonathan Nelson. You no longer have dominion over me love this song let the words just minister to you. i want to dedicate this song to my brothers behind the walls at south bay my sisters behind the wall anyone who might be struggling in any way shape or form this song is dedicated to you Jason Nelson. Somebody just look at your mouth just for a moment. I realize that there are things that are happening in your life, but this song is a reminder that you can take your life back. Is anybody ready to take your life back tonight? The simple song says, Depression. You have to flee. You no longer have dominion over me. Sickness. You have to flee. You no
another half an hour. This broadcast is being dedicated to Essie Odom, who went home to be with the Lord, the mother of State Temple Church of God in Christ right here in the city of Boston. She is the mother of our beloved friend, brother, and co-laborer, Pastor Ronald Odom, and she's the wife of Pastor Paul Odom. We ask you to pray 
for the Odom family in their hour of bereavement. We'd love to hear from you if you would to like to give words of encouragement, a song to dedicate that would edify them during their time of bereavement. We ask you to give us a call at 617-594-9955. Please join us in the instant chat room via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. That's www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. There you can see us, you can hear us, and you can communicate your sentiment. We'll be happy to convey that audibly, or you can call us live at 617-594-9955. 617-594-9955. Welcome, Cool said. My beloved brother, all the way from Miami, Florida, man of God, we're always so grateful to have you in the instant chat when we love you to life. Greetings to my brothers again behind the walls of the South County House, the Suffolk County House of Correction. Uh, we love you, men of God. Keep your heads up. Be encouraged. Love you, my brother. Everardo Jones, for your courage in this unprecedented process in your journey of recovery that you are now in the recovery program. You're in the transitional program post-detox. I'm so honored that God sovereignly orchestrated that I had the privilege of meeting my brother and he said, I don't want to do this any longer. And we were able to direct him to detox. God opened the doors and allowed him to get a bed in a detox and he went through that process. He found favor even in the detox that they allowed him to stay an additional day while they found him a transitional bed and he's now in a transitional program 28 days. Pray for my brother Everardo Jones. Please those who know the words of prayer, pray for him as he is desiring to go to an unprecedented process in his place in his recovery. Pray for his children. Pray for my brother Johnny Walker. Pray for his children. He's also in a transitional program. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to meet this brother behind the walls of the South Suffolk County House of Correction. I continue to pray for the brother. He had come out of prison and had relapsed. God allowed us to reconnect, and he went to a detox upon our reconnection. He's now in the transitional program, and we're just grateful for the opportunity to walk with these men of God. The Bible says, confess your faults one to the other. Pray one for the other so that we can be healed in that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. But our weapons aren't carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. One believer can put a thousand demonic forces to fight that come to kill, to steal, and to destroy the life and the life more abundantly. Our eternal Father has already secured for us via the sacrifice of the only begotten son, Jesus, and two in agreement can put 10,000 to flight. So let's join together in unity and push back those forces of darkness that come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 1, we who are spiritual, the mature state of the character of God, we are to restore one another. Restore one who's overtaken in a fault, in a spirit of meekness, one of the nine graces of the fruit of the spirit of of God. The Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. He that loveth not does not know God. Beloved, let us love one another. First John verses 4, 7, and 8. But we speak in tongues of men and of angels, and we've got prophecy that we've got faith that we could speak to a mountain and it be cast into the sea or benevolent that we give our body to be burnt and none of those things are governed with the ministry of reconciliation or motivated by love, selfless sacrifice, the ministry of reconciliation, the same spirit in which we've been comforted by God who loved us so that he left his throne in heaven, came into the element of time, wrapped himself in human flesh and was tempted in all points as we are presently yet without sin because of his desire to qualify to be the perfect sacrifice for the sins of all of humanity from the beginning of time and to the end of time. Every sin we've ever done and will ever do has already been paid for via the sacrifice of the only begotten son, Jesus. There's no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through the sacrifice of the only begotten Son, Jesus. Thanks be to God that he loved us so that he laid down his life. The Lamb was slain even before the foundation of the earth was ever even laid. Love to hear from you. 617 594 
9955-617-594-9955. Going to some more music by Vashad Mitchell from his album entitled The Collection of His Hits from Vashad Mitchell, my song. But this song is entitled Silent Tears. Sometimes you're hurting real bad and you really can't seem to let it out. And it's like a knot in the throat or a lump in your throat. And you really can't tell anybody because you tried that before and it seemed like everybody got their own problems. But we can't deny to take it and God hears. Go oh, yes, he hears our silent tears. One of the God, he saw to my brother, cool said. I'm so glad to hear that he's wiping away your silent tears, man of God. Oh, bless your name, God. Thank you. How many times have the word says they that sow in tears will reap in joy? Hallelujah, God. Thank you. What about church folks? Yes, Lord. And, and, and you know, you come to church and you really, you really don't want them to know they really got the best of you. And, and so you kind of try to hold yourself together and tuck yourself under and, and go through the service like ain't nothing really going on. But on the inside, you're about to burst. But, but you need to know tonight that even though you can't tell nobody else, that God hears your silent tears and he'll rock you in the midnight hour. I wish I had a witness tonight. Somebody's hurting tonight and you ain't told nobody about it. Nobody about it. But you need to know that God is listening. He knows. He knows your sorrow. He knows your sorrow. He, knows your he heals your pain. He's there to heal. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah. Listen. He's Jehovah. 